Hey, what's going on guys? Um, so a couple weeks ago I had a, a little bit of a breakdown and I started kind of filming, repairing the breakdown part way through and I could have sworn I filmed like an intro like explaining what was going on and stuff and uh, I was looking back through the footage and apparently I never did. So uh, basically what happened was um, I went, pulled up to a stoplight and I pressed my clutch pedal down and I just heard a loud snap and all of a sudden like the clutch wouldn't disengage. Um, so what I found is that one of the two bolts that holds the master cylinder like into uh, the pedal so you can like push down on it and the bolts hold it so you can press down on it, one of those two bolts uh, sheared off. So uh, I called my buddy Kevin and he towed me with his Audi 200 uh, to a parking lot so I could jury rig it to get home and then I started fixing it. So uh, I think uh, where we're at in the footage is where you'll see is I'm just starting to work on removing the clutch line. But basically what I had to do is cut the clutch line because the flare nut was uh, so rounded off that I couldn't get the flare nut off. So I cut the clutch line and then replaced the flare nut and made a new clutch line. So uh, that's what you're about to see and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. So, I've been able to get the line in wrench in there through here. And as you can see, uh, here, let me position this so you can see, as I loosen, um, I am able to turn, and this one is not stuck at all. And I was able to get out right away, super easily. And you will notice that fluid is leaking out of this. Obviously, if you were to not have a breakdown and you were like, hey, I want to change this line for whatever reason, you would absolutely, see, there she's free, you would absolutely 100% want to bleed the entire system before you did this because I am just leaking brake fluid. So that's super bad. And uh, according to the service manual, if you get brake fluid on any paint, please wash it off with water immediately. And uh, I've tried to do that, but obviously I'm in an apartment complex with no uh, like hoses. So I just have been bringing a bucket out here with, with water and dumping it on anything that I think gets brake fluid on it, which is super not dope. But anyway, so that connector is now free, so let's see if I can pop that line free. Oh boy, that line goes in there deep. Oh, there she goes. Okay, that's free. Let's see if I can pull this baby out. Wow, those clips are really tight. Maybe I'll take a second and figure out what I need to do to make those clips release so I don't break them. I'll be back. And with that, the hard line is out. So I was able to finesse it out of that clip in there. It's actually kind of marred up, kind of bad, honestly. But eventually I got it out. And then I was able to push it down through the t from the top downwards until I got this baby all the way out. So I noticed there's some heat shielding on here. I kind of doubt I will be able to reuse the heat shielding, although maybe I can still make it work with re-bending this guy, depending on how bendable he is. I guess I'll try that first, see if I can re-bend him down a little bit further, see if he can reach uh, where the master cylinder would need to be. And if not, then I'll take that new line and bend it to match like this one. So yeah, there you go. I guess we'll see. Well, for about three minutes worth of trying, I found that I cannot bend this line at all by holding it and using pliers or locking pliers to try to grab it and turn it. So what I'm gonna say that means is that I'm not gonna be able to use this line again, and I will have to just cut this, uh, cut this flare off so I can get the flare nut out, and then I will just bend a new line. All right. So this is uh, how I decided to try and immobilize the line for me to bend it. It's actually relatively easy to bend by hand. Um, this isn't going to be perfect, but this line is bendable enough that I can bend it by hand in place. So if I have any issues, I will just do it by hand. 
but I think that I'm gonna call this good and uh, I'm trying to look around. I know I have the other piece of the line that I cut off. Oh, there it is, found it. So I'm gonna hold that up to the end here and set that for my length for how long I need this to be. And I'm gonna cut it a little bit long because if it's a little bit long, it'll just stick up a little bit high in there and I don't care about that. So I noticed that I am gonna lose whatever heat shielding is on this. Um, you know, uh, anyone who knows 370s knows that they do have problems with this line getting hot. So uh, I may have to end up taking this out at a later date and buying some heat shielding. But at this, uh, at this time, I just need to make sure that uh, I can actually drive the car to work. So, because I've been borrowing my buddy's Suburban, uh, it's whatever, it's around the corner. Um, he's been nice enough to loan me, and I literally feel guilty driving it. So I guess this, this is what they mean when they say uh, you can't just have a race car, you also have to have a daily. And yes, I know it's not a race car, but to me it's it's the coolest car I've ever owned. So to me it's a race car. Anyway, um, yeah, I will uh, get to work, I guess. The other thing to remember, which I obviously haven't done yet, I have not flared these ends, uh, and I will show how to use the flaring tool, but I have not flared these ends, but remember to put the flare nuts on before you flare the ends, otherwise I'll, you will have to redo your entire process. All right, I'll get back to work. So this is uh, how I decided to try and immobilize the line for me to bend it. It's actually relatively easy to bend by hand. Um, this isn't gonna be perfect, but this line is bendable enough that I can bend it by hand in place. So if I have any issues, I will just do it by hand. But I think that I'm gonna call this good and uh, I'm trying to look around. I know I have the other piece of the line that I cut off. Oh, there it is, found it. So I'm gonna hold that up to the end here and set that for my length for how long I need this to be. And I'm gonna cut it a little bit long because if it's a little bit long, it'll just stick up a little bit high in there and I don't care about that. So I noticed that I am gonna lose whatever heat shielding is on this. Um, you know, uh, anyone who knows 370s knows that they do have problems with this line getting hot. So uh, I may have to end up taking this out at a later date and buying some heat shielding. But at this, uh, at this time, I just need to make sure that uh, I can actually drive the car to work. So because I've been borrowing my buddy's Suburban. Uh, it's whatever, it's around the corner. Um, he's been nice enough to loan me, and I literally feel guilty driving it. So I guess this, this is what they mean when they say uh, you can't just have a race car, you also have to have a daily. And yes, I know it's not a race car, but to me it's, it's the coolest car I've ever owned. So to me it's a race car. Anyway, um, yeah, I will uh, get to work, I guess. The other thing to remember, which I obviously haven't done yet, I have not flared these ends, uh, and I will show how to use the flaring tool, but I have not flared these ends, but remember to put the flare nuts on before you flare the ends, otherwise I'll, you will have to redo your entire process. All right, I'll get back to work. Ooh, that's not gonna be very good lighting. All right, I need to make sure I don't hit the car. Okay, so I have the last little bit here, the part that I cut off before, and that's gonna give me my final length. Uh, for what I want to cut for this guy. So basically, I'm going to take that final length. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to give it just a little bit extra. And uh, I'm going to call it right there. Now I'm going to take the line cutting tool, and I'm going to cut this spot. And I figured I'd show it. So I'm going to take the line cutting tool and put the blade right about where I just measured. And I'll slide my thumb just a little bit down so I can get the blade where I want it. And tighten it up. So like I said, you want to tighten it until it just grabs. And then you see I can rotate it around. And then I will tighten it a little bit. Rotate it around. And actually, I'm going to bend this out just a little bit so I can get it all the way around. Tighten it a little bit more. Spin it around. Still good on length. Looks like that I am. Even got a little bit extra bend in there. Okay, so tighten, spin, tighten, spin, tighten.
ahead and spin. So basically this process is cutting through the line right now while still giving the line a nice clean edge. You'll see here. And you just keep tightening and spinning until you get all the way through the line. And eventually the line will fall off. Actually, I'm going to support it a little bit so it doesn't tear out there at the end. Tell you what, this was a lot bigger pain when it was still in the engine bay uh, to get it off. Which was the only way I was going to get this original hard line out since I couldn't get the nut off. Um, I'm assuming that there are better tools out there that would have been able to get that nut, even though I couldn't. But I couldn't. And, whoops, there she goes. So, there she's free. And doesn't look like that scratched my paint, so good on me. And you can see that the, well, maybe you can't see, but that's a really clean cut on each side. So, now I have this end cut as well, and that's also a super duper clean cut as opposed to the other end of this guy, the normal one, which is warped kind of bad because of when I cut it, it was kind of a jank cut. But now, let me bend this back to meet the same angle. And we'll get this end here, and we can see that I have just about the same amount. Uh, I can't get my fingers out of the way. Ooh, maybe I can hold it Ooh, like that. That'll work. We can see that we have just about the same amount of length there. And remember that I have extra bend in this line, so I can fix it that way. Hey, bud. Hey. <sighs> All right, so basically how the flaring tool works is you take this guy, and you're gonna set your height so that the line is just about level with the top of the flaring tool, like so. And then you're gonna turn it and lock this guy into place. And you want to try to keep your height right as you do that. And I'm actually going to have to go one size smaller. As you can see, I'm still sliding out of that. So it's not the right size for this line. So let's go over to this guy. Slide it up. Get our height just right. That looks just a little bit too high. A little bit too low. We'll try that guy right there. So then... Loosen this baby up, slide it into place, and lock it down. Ooh. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, the flare nut is already on. Don't forget this. I should have to cut it off and do it again. And then you get the right size head um, to put on. And that is not this guy. I think it is this guy smallest head for the smallest setting on the tool that makes sense so come here little guy you want to place the head in the hole just like that oh it is labeled that's great so it's labeled as the 4.75 millimeter and then you're gonna take this guy and you're gonna crank it down uh, so I guess I'll show you guys that So close. Damn it. Oh, praise the Lord. That went up. Okay. Now, I should have to rotate this baby. Kind of like. Do you need to come from a top? Oh, it's too top. high, actually. I just gotta figure out what it's hanging up on. I need to rotate it around. Can you see it? Yeah, up top. Oh. Hold on. Yeah. You're, you're not hanging up on anything right now. You're like right here. Do you want me to hold it in place and you come out and look? Yeah, hold it. Okay, hold it. Say that again. Basically, the hard line needs to rotate 180 degrees. I might be able to make it work, but... Okay, so basically, that hard line there needs to go onto this guy right here. So this guy mounts in there, kind of like this at this angle. So it needs to come in over here. And if you look at it right now, 
it's curling like the reverse of the way that it belongs. So it actually needs to go under and go in, which, because it almost looks like it's inverted of what it should be. All right, so through some awesome finagling, we have gotten the line here up on top to line up with right where we want it to be. So you see now how this, oh boo, this hard line right here, this like brass colored line here, is in about the same orientation as the original 370 line. Um, I'm about to go underneath and lay down and line up the bottom of it. But if you look here, here's the master in its proper orientation. And if you see this little crooked angle here that I'm touching with the phone, right there, that's where the line needs to line up with. So as I put this in here, and you see that brass fitting almost lines up with it, that means we're in the right spot and we can bend the line the rest of the way to meet it. So I'm gonna go down and hook the bottom of the line up and then we'll come back up here and do this. All right, so basically, this line, I don't know how I goofed up so bad on this. Uh... Oh, also, you gotta make sure that that stays basically in the right place. Up there. Me? Like, yeah, you. Oh. Can you see how... <laughs> I thought you were talking to your vloggers. No. I mean, technically they do also. But you see how that line up there... Is that line still in the same spot? No. Oh, fuck. No. Okay, so... I don't know where the fuck it... Hold on. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, go towards the rear of the car. Okay. And then... Let's see. I think that I'm at my hole. Okay. I'm gonna try to take this wrench and spin it on, but uh, that's what it takes some doing. To get everything to line up. Not that way, jerk. This way. Spin back. Come on. Oh, that's still not going on, is it? Darn it. Can you see? <sighs> okay. Cool. Ready? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, so, that line just threaded in. I kind of had to bend. I don't really understand. So this line must be run slightly different than the other hard line because I bent it exactly the same and then I had to do kind of some finagling to get it into place. But both the top and bottom are lined up with where they should be. And I'm just threading the bottom into the connector now. Um, so I'm gonna thread this in pretty far. There may be a torque spec for it. For tonight, I'm not gonna worry about torque spec. Uh, I can worry about that tomorrow. I won't over tighten it tonight. And uh, I probably won't get to bleeding the system tonight, but I'm gonna try to get the system at least hooked up so that tomorrow can be bleeding and leak checking. And uh, It's probably still gonna be dark when I get to work on it tomorrow, but maybe it'll be warmer, who knows. So just this slow and steady process using just a normal, just a normal box end wrench here to get it uh, tightened back in. I do have the line end wrench down here, but it was much more of a pain to get on and it kept slipping down, so I'm just using the normal wrench for now. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, I don't think. Mm. That oh, flashlight. There she goes, that's tight. I was holding that flashlight with my mouth. Yeah? I had to drop it. Proud of you. That's a tough hold. Okay, so that baby's in. You want me to hold on to it up here? Because uh, you just pulled it down. How far did it go down? Too far? that needs to go. Hold on. How bad is it? There you go. Um, no, we're pretty good. Okay, cool. I held it. I'm good. coming out. I held it pretty good. I must say so myself. Thank you for your help, by the way, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Uh, laying under here. Honestly, I feel very comfortable with these lamps, which is nice. Yep. And I think it's like this. I think. I don't really remember. 
look here. Oh no, it isn't. See how that doesn't line up at all? Terrible, I'm an idiot. Flip it. Better. So also, when we put this on, we gotta make sure the rubber grommet doesn't fall off, cause then we gotta start over again. <clears throat> all right, so like I said, this guy's gotta go in there okay. like this, and you are gonna hit the brake booster, and I think the way that I got by it was like wiggling left, but I don't really remember. It's just kind of a feel thing. Okay. I'm gonna go inside, and I'm gonna feed this guy into its proper spot and try to hold it there until this bolt holds it there itself. Okay. All right, I'll see you in a second. And it needs to stay there till the bolt comes for it. Oh, that's just a pain. Okay. Oh, I bet I know what I can do. Give me... I see it. I bet I can take another bolt or a stick or something long and thin and I can stick it through there and then the bolt will push this. Put this in. Where are you at? Right here. What's up? Is this orientation? Like this. Yeah. Okay. This like, thing yeah, is uh, vertical. Yeah. This thing on the right is angled to the right. The bolts will line up. Close. Am I not on it? You're in one of the holes that I can see. I lost sight of the other hole. You're not through them, but you might be in them. Oh, fuck. Push that back through. Is it just... What other one am I matching up? You're definitely matching up on the top hole. I can't see the bottom hole. What do you mean by bottom? Let me see. There's two holes. Fuck. Push back that. You're off. Off. Bring that back. Okay. That looks perfect. Okay, so how close are you? Are you hitting the master? Or are you hitting the brake booster thing? No. Okay, so can you push it in deeper? Just jostle it around and push it in deeper. It feels like it is. As deep as it goes. Not all the way in. 100% definitely not. Okay, hold on. Commitment to this vlog right now because half-assing it because I can't film in. I wonder what I'm not. Why I'm not able to? Because uh, it feels like I'm lined up. Oh, I think I know why. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh fuck this fucker. I mean this. Sh Try it again. You want to switch spots? Sure, yeah. Okay. Alright, so my fiance has assumed the laying under the steering column position. And now she's going to record me trying to finagle it in. Here you go, gorgeous. Okay, thank you. Have fun with that. Okay, so basically, the problem that you were having is you didn't get low enough. So, what you got to do is you got to get around the brake booster 
get a roll bolt in. So that's kind of an issue. Push your hand on the engine side of that pedal assembly. Push your hand against the, the foot well. You see how it's kind of fluffy, kind of gray? Gray, fluffy, what the fuck? Okay. I'm coming. Wait, stop. Stay, stay, you're good. No, no I'm stay. kind of losing blood to the head. Yeah. All right, so the whole master is now in. And uh, Marissa here, my wonderful fiance, just was able to get the uh, rod back through the clevis and the clutch pedal. Because I was laying under there for like 15 minutes and I couldn't get it. She's like, can I try it? I was like, sure, why the heck not? If anybody's done it, it's your best version of Tetris to lay under the steering column and try to play with it. And when I swear to you, within like two minutes, she had it in. And then she got the cotter pin in too. So now we're all good. So now I just got to take this line here and finesse it to get it into the threaded part of the master cylinder that leads downward. That's uh, pretty darn close. Uh, Marissa, can you point at it? Do you know what I'm talking about? This? Yeah, here. Uh, but now pull, yeah, right there, where Marissa's finger is ending up. You can see that the uh, hard line is near her finger. I just need to finesse those two things to meet up with each other and thread that in. And then basically the whole system below the master cylinder will be reinstalled. Obviously there's gonna be a ton of air in the lines. So tomorrow is gonna be bleeding day. But this is all the hard work done, so that's awesome. I'm super excited about that. Um, minus, I'm gonna... the, uh, minus the uh, thing I dropped. Oh, yeah. We lost one of the little plastic grommets that uh, goes between the, each end of the firewall. So, honestly, the, it's gonna be a the connection's going to be a little bit weak on this top bolt side. But I can't find it anywhere, and I think it fell down into the subframe there. You can't really see it, but there's a hole down in there. And uh, I think it fell in down in there. I can't find it on the floor. I can't find it in the engine bay. I reached around a bunch, couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm gonna say that it's probably gone, which sucks. So if anybody's ever doing this, I super don't recommend that. But that's where we're at today. So. My pee. That's all right. Okay. All right, so yeah, I guess that's your update and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys soon. All right, as you guys saw by that little clip, um, we just got everything reattached um, through the power of teamwork, mostly. Um, we were able to get everything uh, threaded back into place. Um, the I don't have a torque wrench for these hard lines, so they're kind of just as tight as I think they should be, which, again, is bad. If you have a torque wrench, use it. Um, but as you can see, everything is reattached. So tomorrow, I'm going to fill this up with fluid and bleed the lines. Uh, I didn't get uh, Motol RBF 600, which is the high heat uh, brake fluid that is like super recommended for 370s for the reason that this system sucks and gets super hot and then your clutch starts to go out. So I'm going to order some of that and eventually I will bleed the stuff that I'm going to put in it tomorrow out and just use that stuff. But for now, we're done and uh, I think it's time to uh, go to bed and go to work tomorrow and everything else but hopefully we'll be driving tomorrow which is awesome because i've been having withdrawal from my car and uh there's still a lot of stuff that's got to go back in the car um the wheel well the fender well whatever the little plastic thing is still here um what i could do is i could put the car down make sure everything works and then just take the wheel off and put the wheel well on that'd probably be the easiest way to do it um, we'll see. We're going to probably deal with that after we're sure everything is bled because I don't want to take it off these ramps until I'm sure that I can get the clutch to engage and disengage and everything else correctly. So, anything else you want to add? 
Nope, it's cold. <laughs> All right, yeah. Where are you going, Zach? Oh, you got can't it. see it. We oh. got it. You can see your breath, which is yeah. awesome. All right, well, I just wanted to say that my fiance is a huge trooper because I was totally ready to give up and do this tomorrow, and she was like, yeah, we're going to finish it. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank uh -huh. you. Love you. All right, well, that'll be it for us for tonight. Have a good night, everybody.